present. They were real men, not not a lot, but say baby boomers and Gen X. Some men knew how to fix cars. Some men knew how to support themselves. Uh, I do slam on the baby boomers, but those men did kind of work. Certainly the labor force participation rates were high. The, per the percentages of real men in these um, <clears throat> uh, generations, they, they existed. They were there. there. There were some real men. But starting with the whatever it was, fourth wave, third wave feminist, baby boomer women laying it right down there where – Divorce became a popularity contest. Who could divorce the quickest and the fastest? They made it an Olympic event, as I always say. Uh, and then for my generation, I knew that that was the 90210, the Friends, the, the gossipy magazines. Uh, by the time my generation came online, there was definitely an us versus them adversarial relationship and environment between the sexes. And even though there were some men who did try and we went to school and all this other stuff, we, we did exactly as we were told. <clears throat> we were uh, the majority of men are rejected. That's just human nature. That's regardless of the generations. But the women of our generation and there, it's happening. It's like it, it is it is the 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 train is crashing. It's in the middle of the crash. It's not going down the tracks anymore. It isn't just the initial contact between the train and the other train, these trains are at their peak at my generation, the peak crash with the most carnage, peak carnage, where the gals, my generation, roughly speaking, menopause hit. You ain't got no eggs, no more eggs. You're all dried up inside. No more, no more eggs. Your youth is gone and it's over. And this gal was within range of my age. <clears throat> Shocked? Did you know that you lose your beauty and your youth? But it's it's telling me she says, "Well, I was just there. I could have been all I wanted." But to her, you know, like there's hope. Yeah, maybe you could find an older guy. And just so you know, there's always hope. There's always a chance. Three hundred million people in the United States, a couple billion on the planet. But generally speaking, your statistics are very low because. The men that once did exist, they've ran off, they rode off into the sunset long ago. Oh, there's always the simps, there's always the desperate. I know one guy in his fifth mail order bride, and he's definitely a boomer. All right. So there's I guess hope springs eternal, or at least horniness does for a certain segment of the male population. But generally speaking, the men that you more or less sent off, they're not coming back for, for many different reasons. Divorce has certainly put a bad taste in many men's mouths. Obviously, the baby boomer generation. Um, again, just finger on the pulse, no official polling or whatever. I look at some, uh, I do look at some data, but what comes across my desk, you know, how many, here's a nerdy reference, Akira, when they're looking at that globe and the ball and they're trying to predict what's going to happen with Akira. <clears throat> like I could, I could read my crystal ball. Things come across. I look, um, a lot of guys are just dropping out. As men get older, their testosterone goes down. So biochemically, um, uh, what's it called? Hormonally, they just have less interest. And then another thing that you guys don't think of, guys and gals, but gals in particular, look, by the way, my generation just decided, oh, we're going to be just like the baby boomers. We're going to get divorced too. <clears throat> Divorce cripples you financially, both the man and the woman. I know they make the money, but I'm just saying, if you look afterwards, divorce does not help out people's finances. And so you do need some basic finances to get involved. But those guys, they, they couldn't even want to. Some of them, they can't afford it. <laughs> like, no. I know one guy, multimillionaire. I, I, uh, he sent me a picture of a gal <gasps> cooking in his kitchen. <gasps> She was cooking. Now, she was wearing shoes, so that's all right. <clears throat> Not totally. And she wasn't pregnant because she was too old. I said, who's the girl? He said, this is my concubine. He ain't ever getting married again. So there were those men. They, for a multitude of reasons, said, no, I'm not doing this. Either emotionally, financially, psychologically, biologically. They're not in the market in the numbers they once were. And those guys are not coming back. <clears throat> and if they do come back, they're not getting the, the good ones. <laughs> they're, I know one guy who's still jacked like 62, uh, ex-Marine. 
or once a marine, always a marine. But no, no marriage. Mm -mm -mm. Nope. You got your own place and you have your own finances. That ship has sailed. But those ships were once there. Those ships did exist, which is not the case for younger gals. Now let's go under 40. Now I think about it. Maybe it should really be more under 35, but the younger generations. Ladies, I don't care how much propaganda and lies you've been told by the media and Oprah and whoever replaced Oprah that you don't need no men and men are the enemy and you can survive and they all did. They just want one thing, which is true. They do. Well, they want more than one thing. There is still, if I had to, and I'm a pessimistic guy, there is still 200,000 years, 2 million, depending on where you want to consider humans to you know, homo sapien or Neanderthals, whatever it was, but many thousands of years of human evolution where you got along with guys for better or worse. I'm not saying it's perfect, but guys were part of your lives going back as far as beyond recorded history. And there is going to be a component in a piece of you that is going to end up being like the uh, Gen X colleague I saw, not my really my colleague, a compatriot lady crying, oh, I want to be a stand-at-home mom. There's going to be a part of you, maybe not your sentient part, maybe not your frontal cortex part, maybe not even what you want, but there will be this biological, not this logical, hardwired into you part that is going to want to have a guy. And depending on whether or not you're going to adhere to it, you want that or not, all right, you're going to have to then accept that if you wanted a guy. I'm asking you to be intellectual. If you want a guy. Now, I look at polling data. Here's where the data does come in. <clears throat> Men are ranked around seventh for younger gals in their 20s, late teens, 20s, making logical sense. Obviously, you want to go to school, get an education, career, financial stability, and all that. But then you look at millennial women. This is under 40. Men are still fourth behind <laughs> career and education. So so maybe men are not that highly ranked. Maybe there are other goals and pursuits you want in life. <clears throat> but if you're saying, you know, sometime down the road, you might end up like, you're like, oh, you really do want it deep down inside, but shh, don't tell anyone because you might piss off the hive. You might upset, you might not be, oh, you might, you might upset Becky and she's queen bee at the local, whatever it is that you work. All right. If you wanted that, shh, I won't tell anyone. You're you're a bleep crick too, and you know why? Because there ain't there aren't no guys to begin with in your generation. There was no men to leave who would never came back. These men never manifested themselves in the younger generations. And what I mean by that is, the internet has made it abundant. Like you can't hide it anymore. And I would say. Maybe this isn't the universal official position of most women in the West, but based on the internet, the official position, damn well, looks like you don't like men. Whether you, that's what deep in your heart of hearts is or is not. But with all that, the TikTok and the YouTube, it, it has laid bare in belied what probably, I guess, estimate closest to lurks deep in the heart of women. And maybe, maybe you do want men, maybe you don't. But all I'm saying is that the internet and the face that women have put on the internet for, mm, what, 15 years now, whether it's social media, YouTube, certainly TikTok, which I admit is toxic and maybe not as close to reality as others. But this whole war of the sexes thing has resulted in these boys who have not become men. Now, we could argue, yes, that's in part... Because of diet, lack of parenting, absolutely lack of parenting, no real men. Um, we could also argue socially, society-wide speaking, we have shame by masculinity. I am 100% certain one big major factor uh, that has resulted in the lack of real men that you ladies uh, rue and lament the loss of. or There was no loss. They never existed in the first place. But y'all keep voting for government checks and free shit. And I got news for you. Putting life on easy mode does not result in real men, hardworking men. I love it. I want to make $160,000. I'm going to vote to take 50% of his money away 
And he better be sensitive, but he better be a brute and bad. Wait, look, look, that's mutually exclusive. So uh, social, sorry, ladies, no matter how much the people who gave you horrific dating and life advice told you socialism work, it, it results in pansified, pussified men. Some guy on Twitter, he was uh, Santiago something. He was in Nashville complaining about the replay. He's like, the Republicans better look out for Gen Z. And you look at this guy, he's just this soft pussy, just this baby face, soft skin, soy boy, noodly arm. Like you could just see the skinny fat. Like there's your Democrats, lady. Here's your boy. He wasn't a man before and then kind of devolved it. No, that's that's the result. But another thing, <clears throat> even with all that headwind, going against young boys to become real men. I think the most debilitating thing was the internet showing at least a side of women, whether that's accurate or not, it's the side they saw that you basically told them you don't need them, you don't want them. So you could say, but I want men. Go back a couple of videos. I want to hear good stories. I want to hear stories about women that treated men nice. I because I can't believe all of them. Obviously not. Not, all, but the the wall, the unified front, the marketing department of Women Inc. in the West is pretty conclusively. I hate. I it's almost bordering anti male. But you certainly have told these young men you don't need them. And with the attitude and the lip going on on the internet where you're like, okay, you're flexing or boss bitch or girl boss or whatever it is. You know, he bet it is. He bet it. And all the drama that's surrounding the battle. Is, it, okay, is that is that real? But it maybe, maybe not. It is an S show and that's what's showing. And you've told men they don't that you don't need them. They see this stuff on the internet. And just so you know, to get girls requires a lot of work on the part of men. I've gone through this before. <clears throat> you got to go to the gym. Remember, ladies, all your, just take your checklist, right? He better. Let's go through that. He better. He better. $100,000. Well, what if the kid's 21 and going to college? No, he better. All right. Now you're in the top 5%. If you want a guy who's young too, or you're, you don't know young men make that money. He better. Be six feet tall. All right. Well, that's 14% of the 1% that you just, he better have a house. Well, that's largely impossible for young men today. He better, I don't know, whatever your emotionally high emotional EQ, that, that's not a thing. I don't know how you measure that, but that that's not a thing. He better. Have no baby mamas or baby. I I don't know. The list goes on. I, I can't think of all the. Well, when a guy looks at these hurdles that you put up, you got to give anyone hope if you expect them to take actions. But if you make the situation or the hurdle too high to jump, hopeless, I wonder. Oh, you get the guys you're complaining about. These guys never get out of the gate. These guys live at home. They don't go to college, which is good. Nobody should be going to college just to go to STEM or accounting or something like that. So the boys are ahead of you girls in that regard. Uh, but then they don't go on to get a tradesman, drive truck, um, anything else that would <clears throat> become a carpenter, or join the military. I got all the whining and complaining from all these baby boomers like Dr. Lawrence Summers. Former labor secretary. No, that was Robert Wright. He was former education secretary under Clinton. I don't know why the men aren't working. You eliminated all hope for uh, at least, I'd say, 70% of the men in your labor. Why 70% 70 of the men in our generation, Cappy? Because 70% of the young men are fat. If they thought there was hope and if they had any discipline, if they had a father, if they thought that maybe their efforts at work would be rewarded, they would hit the gym, they would work hard, they would whatever it is, they'd save their money, they'd build a house. But since maybe not you individually, but as a group, women in the West have made it abundantly clear. I swear by my pretty blue bonnet, I will end you. No one's going to get that one. You have made it abundantly clear. <laughs> 
that, that it's borderline impossible for the average guy now. And it's going to come at the cost of that individual investing. They're entirely, essentially a slave. What is a guy supposed to do? Go to the gym four hours a day, then go work 10 on top of going to college. Oh, and then he has to like, I don't know, get into chakra crisp. Oh, and by the way, all you guys who, who work at the gym, right? And then you work 10 hours a day and you go for STEM and you make your, your $200,000 a year. You better vote Democrat and give half that up for all the welfare bums and the criminals. <laughs> and you can, I can't, all the men suck. I can't find a guy. But it's worse for your, your generation. If, if you want to date a guy roughly within your generation. I mean, I guess millennial girls got a shot if they wanted to eat Gen X, but those again, those guys, they ran off into the sunset. <clears throat> but it's worse for you, for you younger gals because you've not groomed or cultivated any real men to begin with for them to ride off into the sunset to never come back. And I and here's here's a problem. Uh, this goes for everybody, every human. After a certain amount of time. There's certain aspects, if not most aspects, the highest per majority of your personality and who you are and your, your mentality, it's cemented. There's no changing. Oh, try and get a boomer to do anything like, hey, maybe you ought to learn how to use Excel. I'm going to use whatever they use back in the 70s before Excel. They're never going to manifest. I, I really, I've, what was it? How not to become a millennial? I think that was the book. I liken, well, the generations, but in this particular case, we're talking about men. It's a wasted crop. And, and I've said this before, human beings are not uh, tomato plants. We just grow it every year. They're more like, um, what is it? I want to, I want to play nutmeg tree. I thought, oh man, I like nutmeg, you know, all Christmassy. I can make my own nutmeg. Turns out it takes 50 years for these things to even, even produce fruit <laughs> versus the nutmeg nut. Well, humans are kind of the same way. It takes a good 30 years to get a full grown adult, especially modernly. And it's going to take at, if, if this crop of men that you, not you, 100% have cultivated, but we as a society and culture have cultivated. Honest to God, you know what I think? It's almost identical to this. I know you girls don't like the idea of being needed by men or that men might have a requirement or a call upon you or a request of you. But men without women is like plants without the sun. And you're going to get the same results. None of these men are going to bear fruit. And if you're going to have any hope of it, it's going to take at least another, at least a decade. Let's say you got your standard, not to stereotype, but let's say you got your standard Zoomer. Dad wasn't around, raised by mom. Mom kicked the kid off to daycare because mom had her master's degree in public health. And that was more important. <clears throat> kid was raised by a bunch, just, and then got nothing, nothing but female teachers from kindergarten until about maybe the eighth grade about how the women didn't need no man. That happened to me, not the kicked off the daycare, but that's the message we got in this in the eighties. Some old harpy baby boomer. Well, you know, girls don't need you. Thanks. <laughs> My six-year-old mind really needs to know this right now. Thank you. Um, you did, they watch the internet. They, they don't see, what was it? That man's alone, hurt, and suffering. Now you think he's going to give a shit uh, what you do to him? If he makes it out of there alive, why do you wake up and smell what you shoveling? <laughs> no one's going to get that one either. Ah, you guys will get that one. <clears throat> so they get nothing, nothing positive, nothing like, oh, yeah, hey, there's hope. Oh, it's just bad. I mean, they were born 10 years ago. They don't know what the hell the patriarchy is, but apparently they're part of it. Apparently, they're present. They're privileged. <clears throat> they don't have any hope. They have nothing to look forward to. You told you didn't need them. Maybe it was fun to pick on them. Boys are a girls. You got a little bit adversarial. They go to college if they go to college. Oh, man. Aren't you boys public enemy number one? That's not a friendly. Well, they just don't. They say, now nah, I'm going to stay home and play video games and jerk off to the prime. 
by the time those guys, if they were to have an epiphany to turn around or let's just crazy idea, American women had a renaissance saying, wow, we've been treating men pretty poorly. We haven't even asked them what they wanted. We're going to turn this around. We're going to cheerlead on guys. We're going to make We're going to give them some sunlight. It's going to, it's going to take at least 10 years of not only a completely different environment to metamorphosize, transfer, transition, change these men from unbearing fruit to plants that actually bear. It's going to take 10 years, not only of a completely different environment, a positive environment, a not anti-male environment, or at least stop blaming men for every problem environment. But they themselves are going to have to do some hard life, permanent life-changing decisions for the better. Kind of like if you're going to lose weight or um, <clears throat> you uh, have some kind of medical condition and oh, you're, you're pre-diabetic, you really got to cut, you know, some life changes. Uh, they're going to have to change their lives. And that's very hard for anyone, male or female, after 30 years of being, you know, uh, 30 years of living. They're, they're going to be set in their ways. And so, ladies, younger ones, it's just, this is just couple things to take away from this, right? One, lower your expectations. Align your expectations with reality. The men are never coming back because they never were men and they never left in the first place. Number two, obviously big, large population. They're not all men are playing video games, jerking off to the prawn. <clears throat> there are some, there are some good men. And if you re and to be intellectually honest with yourself, if you don't want to get married and the career and the education and whatever else, some, you know, a lot of women, their children are higher ranked than men right now. They want to have children before they have. Now, I may not say before, but their priority would be if you gave them a choice, they would say, well, you can have children or a husband. Which one do you want? The majority of young women would choose children. All right. Then men come number seven after that. <clears throat> uh Assuming, though, you did want a guy, do a little bit of pre-planning. Find a good guy. You're going to maybe have to find him in college or early, but keep a keen eye out for the guy who's good. They're out there, but they're just not in that many numbers, especially the younger you get. Guy who lives at home, doesn't have any ambition, agreed. That's why you wouldn't even be attracted to that. But if you could change your eye, change your vision to, to find the diamond in the rough, not the perfectly polished diamond, which, by the way, is Fugazi, the MBA investment banker who's bankrupt and about to be brought in on uh, embezzlement charges. All right. But the diamond in the rough, like there's the truck driver. Oh, truck. Shh. You don't know anything about dating. Shut up and listen. The truck driver who makes $90,000 a year and has saved up his money and is looking to put a down payment on a house, you got to train your eye to see that. That guy's going to be a way better provider. Way, he will be good. It, it, look, oh my God, ladies. Oh my God. Dare I suggest this? Could you maybe pick up the diamond in the rough and dust it off so you have a nice shiny diamond? Or does the diamond have to actually be perfectly presented on a, on a silver platter for you? Oh, my God, you girls are finding all these uh, zo cubic zirconia. <laughs> he, he had sex with me and then he didn't call me anymore. <laughs> all those all those girls posting their L's, that's the one. They slept with Fugazi. They got the oh, the shiny big one, the impossibly big. Sh it was too good to be true, but you girls wanted to believe it anyway. Hey, I got an idea. Why don't you get off your lazy asses, go dig around in the dirt a little bit. Say, is, it, is that a diamond? Take a little brush, dust it off. Whoa, well, you might be surprised. There's some good men out there, even the young ones. Now, as I said before, it's getting increasingly rare. But, but, but this all presupposes you do want to get married and, and or have children. Um, not everyone wants to have kids and get married. <clears throat> but if if you want a guy in your life permanently, marriage and all that, they are not training you worth a damn to find a, a quality man. Not at all. Not at freaking all. And I will also accuse uh, Western Women Incorporated of being the hive. I don't know if it's a popularity contest or why women as a group want to shame other women for getting married or finding a guy in general 
or not being the power guy. I mean, look, wasn't middle school tiring enough? All those popular girls back in the day that that all they they were popular for the sake of being popular and had no core, no substance. <laughs> You're still just following them into your adult life. Like, oh, well, all the girls said, could you stop worrying about what other girls think? Have you noticed how happy other girls are? Not terribly so. What was it? Hang on. I know this is a lot of just land on a lot of empirical evidence and data here. Percent American women on <clears throat> uh, antidepressants. That That's just the antidepressants. Uh, past 30 years, use was higher among women, 17.7%. Uh, use was highest among women age 60 and over, 24. One in four women, 60 and over. Now, if I recall my research correctly, this is in the past 30 days. Well, no, it says right there, past 30 days. The percent that have ever used is, but look, lady, do you want to be happy? Yes or no? You want to be happy? Stop listening to what other women tell you you should want. I will I, I, I inevitably the decision, your actions will be lie or the truth. And I still will come on the side if you look at women's actions. Most women don't want to get married. Okay, you take that back. Most women do want to get married. Most women want to find a husband, but not at the expense of anywhere between four to six, maybe even seven other things if you're religious. Right? And that's fine, ladies. I'd, I'd ask you, like, look, if there are things more important to you than marriage, that's fine. But for your own sake, let's say your career, your education, <clears throat> children, and your religion is more important than finding a husband. He's up there, but those are more important things to you. All right. Well, you get all four, and then for whatever reason, you can't get the fifth. All right. Celebrate the fact you got the four because you wanted them more than the fifth. Don't let the fact that you failed to get the fifth, ruined the fact you got four. You got 80% of what you want and things that are more important than having a guy. So if there's, if you girls really want, you know, come up with your priority list. And if there are things you want more than men, pursue those things, get those things. But as with everything in life, sometimes you don't always get what you want. I always, I, I would love to have myself a Shelby Mustang. I don't think I'll ever get it because it's an egregious thing. <clears throat> I don't let the fact that I don't get a Shelby Mustang ruin my day. I go out and I enjoy my life and be thankful for what I have. But ladies, if you're honest, well, okay, be honest with yourself regardless. But ladies, if deep down inside, guys are number one, you want to get a husband, you you already have uh, an uphill battle given the lack of marriageable men. You, you Men need to support themselves. And what percentage under 40 do that without some government aid or, or a bailout or whatever else? So it's already pretty, pretty low. Uh, and then you got to attract that guy and then you got to find that guy. And then you better hope to God the environment that this guy grew up in hasn't completely sworn him off of marriage. I find it it'd be a fascinating study. There's no way to figure it out. You know, like, but in, you know, the, the multiverse what would happen if we had the same um, childhood upbringing that the World War II generation had today? Like what percent of your, your soy boy, Zoomer millennial types who are living out, what percentage of them would have become real men capable of supporting a family at 19? I don't know. So it presupposed that 40% of, of men's income isn't taken to, to support the government, the welfare state. Look it up. I'm not making it up. Oh, by the way, it's 40% of your income too. More like 37, 38 to be technically correct in the United States. But, you know, a third, a third plus of your income is taken because, oh, you had to be popular. We need to support a welfare state, not families. <laughs> oh. But if you want, if if you really want to get a man more than a career, more than a job, you're like that sad woman, forty whatever, crying, wasted her life. You, you don't want to. You don't want to end up like that. Deep down inside, you just want to be a stay at home. <whistles> now, you do have your work cut off here. Now, the good news is, the official dictate from the Beehive Incorporated, uh, Western Women Incorporated. You're a you're a pick me shy. No girl is to have a man be any part of her life, let alone the center of it. 
Oh my God, another human being in love? Oh no. What are you? I don't know, what are they, uh, a pick Misha? Is that the worst they call you? <clears throat> the good news is they got all the other young gals convinced that married, they're not in the market. You're made fun of if you chase men. You're, you're mocked and ridiculed and shamed, if not even ostracized from certain groups, if you were to go and get married, and raise kids, have a family and things like How dare you be a stay-at-home mom? Even remember Hillary Clinton? Maybe some of you are too young to remember her. She says, well, I was too busy. I didn't have time to make cookies. Because, you know, she loved her career more than she loved her family. I don't know why Bill stepped out on her all the time. It's just shocking. Uh, so there's that. that's going back 30 years ago. Yeah, almost 40 years ago. Now I think, no, 30 years ago. 30 years ago. There's not a lot of competition. So you could, you know, there's not that much supply, but there's not that many girls you're competing against if you want to find a quality, marriageable guy. So just just letting you know, though, for the for the gals 40 and up, they, they just don't cry. Just stop crying. <laughs> we don't care. Stop posting your L's online. Yes, it's vindicating. Yes, it's funny. Yes, we it warms our, our male hearts, but they, they are long gone off. And they're doing something else. They, they ran off into the sunset. Ladies, the men were never there to run off into the sunset. To begin with, if you were under 40 or younger, but if you want to find it, you're going to, you're going to have to dig, you're going to have to dig deep. And, uh, so there you go. I, I guess, I guess the, the concluding thing is just to like, hope is so destroying and damaging and hurtful because it wastes your energy. And then there's the inevitable, uh, reality that comes in and destroys your hope when you crushes down to what the reality in the on the on the streets are i just kind of wanted to like hey he, he get get rid of that hope okay and if it was really important to you take tangible actions and and wipe your eyes clean of who shiny preppy boy with dad's money who's an abuser and is really in debt and is a criminal all right i, I know they're pretty i know they're shiny but if you really want to find a quality, you got you got your work cut out for you and to go start looking for the diamonds in the rough. <clears throat> That's about it. Um, so link below. What do I got link below? I got link below the dad you never had. It's a course I put together because obviously your your dad, no one's been raised by their dads. Even if your dad was around, your dad didn't tell, right? Your dad never told you this, right? Your dad probably just said, whatever you want, sweetheart. I mean, that's why your mom divorced him. But a lot of people are growing up without even the dad around in the first place. All right, here's here's some fatherly wisdom. I give you a little, here's a little taste. Here's a little help you out. But if you need other advice, like in terms of your career, <clears throat> health, safety, you know, what your dad should have taught you, link below is the link to the course, the dad you never had. Or you could just search for it on Teach. Search Teachable Clary, dad you never had, and you'll find it among other courses on finance and economics. Uh, and then I think also link below is how not to become a millennial. Was that it? Maybe it was bachelor pad economic. Oh no. The menu left without the opposite sex. Um, <clears throat> because forecasted, I wanted to be practical in this one. This is my olive branch to the women. Half of the women are estimated of marrying age from 18 to 34. I decide, I think they decide that as, Half of the women of that age range, marriage, marrying age women, will never be married and never have kids by 2030. That is a forecast, not by evil me, but by the evil people at J.P. Morgan. Or was it Morgan Stanley Dean Winter? One of the big New York firms that I am not a part of, so don't shoot me, I'm merely the messenger. Half of you girls, whether you like it or not, whether deep down inside you want to get married or not, half of you are forecasted or fated to never be married and to never have children. And so that's going to, now you got to figure out, well, what do I live for? And so the menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, forecasts that, anticipates that, and says, well, here's what you can live life for. Here's all these things in the world that you can live for both in terms of materialism and action and adventure, but also philosophy and spirituality and things like that, both for men and women. There's a women's many of you girls can tune into that. <clears throat> so there, that, that'll be helpful. That'll be hopeful. And by the way, it's not like you're going to get married tomorrow. 
Like, is, is Mr. Is Prince Charming right around the corner? Well, if, if, uh, if he is, then you don't have to, but you're good. I'm going to imagine it's going to be at least a decade before you find Mr. Wonderful. So you better figure out what to do in the meantime until he comes along because life is just too damn short. Shark Taws, $10. Hey, Cap, I sent you that book. I did get it. Thank you. If you don't feel like listening to the whole thing, I would humbly ask to humor me and at least listen to the first chapter. It's about an hour and some change. Take care. Yeah, when I, when I, I had to dig myself out of 13 inches of snow. <clears throat> I'm still waiting for a lot of it to melt. I just, I, I want to go to sleep. You ever want to like sleep for days? Not, not like I can't stand life. Uh, it needs to, I need, I need a respite from the pain. I mean, I, I just don't want to be up. Don't want to die. I just, I just want to sleep for like five days and then wake up like, Oh, all right. Wisco nomad two bucks. The nice ones have to be make up for poor looks. Huh? The nice ones have to be make up for poor looks. <clears throat> okay. And for two bucks again, hope you're well. I am. I am. I just, I mean, how, how good can you be after shoveling what 50 yards of, and it was the heavy packy snow. It wasn't that light stuff. It was all heavy and packy. The, my lower back hurts. Like I, I stepped in the show. I'm like, oh, what the, I, oh yeah. The shoveling of the snow. Girls, would you like a man to shovel the stuff? Ew, I, investment man, I need a surgeon. He went, a man who shovels snow is also a man who repairs cars. Who also paints the house? Who? Ah, eh, never mind. <laughs> I know a lot of you are like you're just banging your head against the wall or pissing into the hurricane cap. You're like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Uh, big shell, two bucks. Can't be pissing. It's, it's, there we go. See, I knew it. I knew it. Yeah, you're right. You're right, big shell. I just all I want to do for this is so if anyone, oh, you hate women, you did here. Here, I know, I know, I actually don't hate women. It's actually you people, not you guys listening. I said it's the people who accuse me of disliking women. It's you guys lying to these poor girls about like, oh yeah, it's a corporate career and you should hate men. And oh my God, look at this guy Ugh, making your man food. Oh my God, what are you, a pikamisha? How happy are these gals? You 60 and older. One quarter takes antidepressants regular, like in the past 30 days. What the hell is it going to be 30 years from now when millennial younger gals are 60 plus years? What is it? They're going to take it seven times a week? I know. I know. Then I'll just be like, look, see, I try to help. I try to tell, introduce reality. Let me guess. I'm on the misogynist. I hate the womans. Reen Schwarzer, new guy, five bucks, 26 Christian, four months out from a six pack, uh, remote work, 70 K I'm gone. Ladies, Cappy, thanks for all the advice. Let me know if they change their mind. Yeah, no, they're going to have, <clears throat> well, here's another Reen. You get a, you have a great point here. They're the ones that are going to have to counter propaganda. Think of the decades and the terabytes of propaganda that they've given and, and the official stance. The, the girls, are, I've, and I've said this before, girls, okay, another thing for what few women are still listening, you're going to have to ask the guys out. I mean, yeah, there'll always be a guy asking out, but you're going to have, you're going to have to actually become equal in this regard and start asking out guys because these guys who may be good, well, women have always been poor at giving hints. It's been very rare that a girl that liked me ever made it clear. I'm like, oh yeah, she had a huge crush on you. I'm like, what? What? She never said anything to me. <clears throat> so you girls are going to have to like find the guy. What, what I said, dust off the dust and the dirt a little bit. Oh my God. Don't make him lasagna and bring it to his desk when he's working. That, oh. <laughs> Don't invite him home for dinner. If he's like at, at uh, college and he's working over Christmas break. Don't invite him to dinner or anything. That, that'd be crazy. Um, but they will, yeah, they're going to have to, well, and ladies, let me, let me use Reen as an example. 26 is almost a, 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 the perfect stereotype of what I'm talking about here. These men are leaving. They are the, the, the ones that have any potential. And I do have several, you know, IT engineering, whatever makes it a 
they've gone, they've left. They got the message loud and clear from the official policy statement of Western Women Inc. and the Beehive. And I, I remember, we, we guys, we, we were girl crazy. Of course, we'd ask out girls, we'd ask out girls, girls, and this and a girl. Oh man, you go to college for girls. These guys are like, whoa, they, they really don't like us. We're, we're no. So even here you go. I, was, I don't know, ladies. Do you want you want a guy that works out, makes seventy thousand a year before? Oh, Reen, Reen, you foolish boy. You only make seventy thousand a year. Oh my God, whatever. Mexi man and cheese, ten dollars. Given that this is the first time so many women aren't going to have kids, do you think the next generation will see some evolutionary change? Maybe selection for women that actually like men? No, because um, as with many other, like a lot of people say, oh, feminists and and um, leftists generally don't have kids. They're going to outbreed themselves. Like politics is not a genetic. There's no politics gene. You are indoctrinated. You are programmed. Uh, that happens in the public school. Um, <clears throat> but so I don't think it will be women who actually like men. Well, there will be a selection because women who like men are going to obviously statistically higher chance of having children. But I don't think as of yet, th this whole feminism thing is such a recent thing in the grand scheme of human evolution that it's not part of our of our code yet. <clears throat> Um, but let's say the next generation comes up, unless you get rid of the public schools and people start homeschooling, they're going to be taught by pissed off spinster, you know, feminists. They're going to be taught, you know, Marxism and feminism, vote Democrat and all that. And nothing's, and then the girls who would normally just like the boys, if we were brought up under world war two, the great depression, There'd be a lot more men in today's world. We get the right sunlight. We get the right fertilizer and all that. Same thing with if you have the right thing. But if you're going to just send them through the same public schools, you know, oh, America bad, freedom bad, uh, boys bad, oh, oppression, pay. it's not going to change. <clears throat> um, the When there's not enough men to go around to keep the infrastructure up, yeah, then there'll be a change. When there's no food, because all the farmers are men and old and dying, and same thing with tradesmen and carpenters. Uh, yeah, then there, then it'll be. I don't care how much the government check is if if your electricity grid doesn't work, but you got a ten thousand dollar welfare check. There's nothing to buy. <laughs> but hey, you could hire Trisha with her diversity and inclusion master's degree to lecture you about how evil you are because you have a penis. But I have to be in person because she couldn't do it over the internet because the electricity isn't working because we didn't hire enough. We didn't create enough electricity. But we do have Tanner and 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 uh, what's another uh, guy's name? Tanner and Tanner. And they have their music therapy degree. Maybe they can strum a guitar and sing about the poverty and the, the oppression of the capitalist class. That'll, that'll, that'll make the food grow. <clears throat> Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. John Watson, five bucks. I could never be with a truck driver, as she said, with the gin, with the gin on her sachet, grin on her face. Five years ago, I'll never forget that. She's still living in poverty. Life. Oh, John, John, send me that story, man. I would love to hear. You got to give me more than just just two sentences. A gal, I could never be with a truck driver, huh? Still in poverty, huh? Girls, I, what what two of you are still listening? By the way, I I know status is really important to the hive. Like you couldn't possibly walk into a party with a room of all your sorority friends, none of which ever liked you, and you never liked them, but they're your frenemies, and you got to keep up. So, uh, and they wished you nothing but the worst. Um, it's okay if you date a guy who doesn't have a popular, you know, uh, a profession. It, it wouldn't it be nice to have a guy who has a stable employment and money. Oh, but you need money and he needs a sexy title because it's more important that you impress the hive than you actually be happy. Okay, I got it now. The Menu, Life Without the Opposite Sex, available on Amazon.com and link below. <clears throat> got no eggs, no more. Universal Coordinate, 
Uh, $15 Australian. Mental health is rampant. And uh, you mean mental illness is rampant. And they're rarely ever satisfied. They're like empty buckets with holes. And their expectation is that the man does the impossible and keeps their bucket full. Dating is futile. Yeah, I've started. I've seen some. I, 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 I'm not a girl. I didn't grow up a girl. So I don't know what exactly they were given, like behind closed doors. But I witnessed it in the K through college. Um, I. That's what happens when you simply are and you must not become. You just, you just, you need suffering. You need suffering. You need loss. You need pain. You need to struggle and you need strife so you know what is valuable. But if you have a whole world just lining up to suck you off, like, oh my God, you're brave and amazing. I mean, perfect example is Ray from Star Wars. I didn't see one of it. Now I'm going to see it. She just knows the force. That's why those those Star Wars movies did so bad. There's no story. There's no struggle. I don't know, girls. I mean, and you bring up the the. I would say it's the ultimate paradox or I, I tragedy. It's the ultimate tragedy. The one thing that would have given women happiness, joy, contentment, peace, fulfillment, to live a full life that they would not regret, is the one thing they were propagandized and conditioned to absolutely reject, if not. Uh, um, villainize <clears throat> and even now I I, I just like uh, maybe genetically women never like guys that much to begin with obviously that's my running theory yet at the same time I've always said well, okay if not men then what oh what you tell me why? oh career edge okay fine Let's don't cry about the men but if mental illness the frequency or the, the use of drugs is any indication somebody's lying or they're not completely honest with themselves. Or maybe it's kind of like the body needs a certain number of key critical organs to work and have a key critical to have a, a happy life. You can't just have a career. You need to have like you need to have like five critical things. That makes a lot of sense. Like you need your you need to make money. OK, you need a career that maybe prerequisites an education. Um, <clears throat> you need your health. So you got to be in good shape and all that. And then maybe you also need to be loved. But I see men offering themselves a lot more than women do. Although that, as I indicated before, kind of the premise of this is men are offering themselves less. So they're not, they're not investing in themselves to be attractive to women. They've become very myopic, very self-centered where it's like, well, I, why would I go do, why would I go to the gym? That's hard. Why would I learn calculus? Why do I become a plumber? Those things are all hard. Oh, and you girls are going to vote in a, so, a, a stimmy check and snap and I could go get my chicken tendies. And mom's going to enable me because she just doesn't have the balls to kick me out because she kicked dad out, but she doesn't have the balls to kick me out. Yeah, I'll just keep living this this sad, pathetic existence. Where am I a good man gone? 1947. Ooh, it was patriarchy back then. Yes, yes, it was. It was just so horrible. It was all so bad with GDP growth rates of 7% and unemployment of 45 with savings rates and men who knew how to build houses and fix cars. Who wants that? <laughs> General 1800 Dumb, our New Zealand agent in the field with the pretty redhead sister for 11 New Zealand dollars. Cappy, you have some big boys in here. I do. A small furry mammal, a large feline, and a clergyman. Laughing a lot. But, I, but serious, I suppose we can never go back. So I was we, we are going to be forced to go back <clears throat> Because, uh, how can I put it quickly without boring everyone with libertarian economics or just regular economics? Men are the ones that were the engine. And if we don't got no fuel, we don't produce no goods. And do women, are there female plumbers and electrical engineers and accountants and surgeons? Yes, there are, but not in enough critical mass, not in the numbers needed to support the population we got now. And as more and more men basically, retreat from society and do not achieve their full potential. Uh, we are not going to be able to produce the things that will maintain our standard of living to the point. It won't just be like a slight, ah, why I made 70,000 last year. Not only make 60. I like, there won't be electricity. There'll be rolling blackouts. Your cars will take, well, what I already took, what I think it was five weeks to wait for a transmission repair. I, you're seeing it happen already. <clears throat> and if it gets bad enough, you know, 
ladies, you can vote in all the government money you want, all the government checks. If there's no goods and stuff in the store, if there's nothing in the shelves there, welcome to socialism. You, you've achieved it. There's nothing to buy with all that government money because you completely demoralize and disincentivize men from producing the lion's majority of stuff in this uh, economy and world. <clears throat> I mean, heaven help us if we stop trading with the Chinese. What would it do? We're already kind of there right now. Could you imagine if the Chinese said, eh, we're not trading with you anymore? Holy cow. We'll go back quick. And then uh, instead of like, yeah, he must have an MBA and he must be six foot one. He'll be like, does he have a gun and like a, a, a wood burning stove and, and a nice warm house? <laughs> Does he have a car that he can fix? It works, but he can also fix it. Because this Mr. Piddlywinks over there with his MBA and finance, bro. Uh, yeah, the investment bank laid him off, and his uh, his BMW doesn't work because it's an over-engineered German piece of shit, <clears throat> which is what all BMWs are. Wisco Nomad, two bucks. Uh, women do all they do for all the women, not men. I know, I know. It's it's. There are some truths that could be universally stated as a group, but not as the individual. Very few women are listening to what I'm saying right now. I understand that. Um, and yes, uh, Big Shell, I am pissing into the hurricane. I'm aware the urine's being splashed back in my face. Ah, I must continue for posterity. Ah. <clears throat> Uh, and generally speaking, women do things for other women, probably based on empirically conclusively as it is right now. Yes, they do it for other women and themselves. The majority of decisions made men are, I mean, they tell us, right? Never do anything for a man. You don't need, okay, we, we got the memo. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's true. I don't, okay. Have fun with that. You know, I don't know about you guys. I like dancing with a girl. I like having sex. I like dining and treating a girl nice. I don't know if girls like it. But really, you got to look back at it and say, okay, it was pulling teeth the entire time to get to take a girl. Think about this. Go back with me, boys and girls. Young Cappy. Young Cappy. Okay. I, now, I'm, I was not as buffed or jack. I was a skinny guy. Very skinny. I wonder where the food is. But I was in shape, ballroom dancing, all that other stuff. Rookie analyst, underwriter, okay, real job. Uh, making, I'd have to adjust for inflation, the equivalent of 60, 65,000. You throw in my dance class revenue and my online uh, finance course revenue, industrious. And then, um, work occasionally security all right so i uh, just to today's number that's probably closer to 85 90 thousand dollars a year back in my 20s late 20s <clears throat> and all i say hey do you want to go to a jazz club and i'll teach you how to dance i didn't say hey do you want to go to the gravel yard and i'll pelt you with rocks i didn't say hey do you want to go to the forest and i'll beat you with a stick i said hey because that was my standard thing. There's a, a j great jazz club I knew. It had a nice dance floor. It was quiet enough. If you sat off in the corner, you could talk. You could also dance. And they had good food and drink. I mean, <clears throat> it was like trying to sell nuclear waste. It was, it was what? <clears throat> of course, when you're young, you're like, what did I do? Oh, maybe I didn't wear the right tie. Da, 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 da. No. One, I was too short. Two, uh, bees be cray cray. I, there was nothing else you could do. <laughs> so I, I am fully aware. And I have nothing else to conclude, but that women do things for themselves and women, certainly not the guys, because man, I, if that's a hard sell, I mean, you go like, here's a bar of platinum. Uh -huh. <clears throat> here's a chocolate Sunday. Oh no, not chocolate Sundays. It and they are miserable. I don't know what what you girls not like fun. What the hell? Scrolling, we've got some other super chats here. I don't want to miss them. T Rash is in the house. I want to get his. He's very kind. Hundred dollar donation with T T Rash. You you got all these girls. You. <laughs> 
here I am. Let's go to a jazz club. I'm in my sewer. I'm ballroom. Dad, I'm T Rash. Yo, bitch, I got some cocaine. Oh, T Rash. <laughs> Ralph Raphael, two bucks. Cappy, did you get a chance to shovel the roof? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, thankfully, the wind and the sun has melted it off in a key place, but I had to like, go and get the overhang snow. You know, there, I let's use that, Ralph. Like, guys, you should be proud of yourself if you just take care of your house and your property and your your maintenance. I get up on the roof and shovel the roof so ice dams don't form or the roof doesn't collapse. Like, uh, but you know what? I like a guy with blue eyes. I really need a guy with blue eyes. Have fun being lonely, ladies. I... Uh, destruction, 89, 10 bucks. Did it do a review of Tax Haven 3000. <clears throat> it uses anime women as a Trojan horse to red pill men on our abusive tax system. Lotus Eaters just did a video on it. Um, destruction, can you email me that over at assholeconsulting.com? That way I'll, I'll have a record and I'll remember it. it. It's an anime? Well, let me look it up. Tax Haven. Tax Heaven. Oh, Tax Heaven. Tax Heaven 3000. Sim experience that really does your federal taxes. Oh. <laughs> okay, so it's um, <clears throat> it's a video game? Is it like an anime turbo tax? There's a girl with pink hair who's dressed pretty. Um, okay, I'll take a look at it. <laughs> T-Rash, here we go for a generous, we were, cocaine sales good today, T-Rash. T-Rash, the one and only, 100 generous dollars. Congrats on 100,000, Cap. Nice to catch you live, been busy lately. Well, well, you are always busy, Mr. Rash. You, you not only have to like get the drug deals and find the housing and satisfy many women, but you, you got to, you got to avoid the the baby mama drama. You are an inspiration to us all. That's uh, I'd actually love to know what you do at uh, daytime. But uh, thank you for blessing us with your presence. Let us know when the book comes out. <laughs> We're just going to know, man. Two bucks. Have to be super nice to make up for being ugly. No, I don't. No, never be super nice. Don't be super nice. Never. <clears throat> never be nice. Never be a dick. Never be a weapons grade asshole. Be aloof. Be indifferent. Be funny. Be charming. Okay? Be dry with your humor. But you never be nice. Be civil. Be polite. Have etiquette. Have decorum. You can drop a girl off like at the, at, like I'll drop you off and I'll park the car. <clears throat> but you never Oh my God, you're so amazing. Never simp. Never, never compliment. Bread and back, Ben and breakfast, $10. Just your neighborhood millennial mechanic, reserve marine. What, oh, another loser. See, I know you guys are out there, but you're just in very small numbers. But I, the irony here, you guys are, you got your own place. You got this going on. You got that going on. I bet you, if you, Ben, if you told me, you probably get one in 15 girls saying yes to a date. Okay, maybe one in 10 saying yes, one in 15 showing up. Can't imagine. Uh, just your neighborhood millennial mechanic, reserve marine, with a house on five acres. Hey, two cars, one truck, one bike, all paid off. I thought I was a 10, then I remembered your five. Oh, Ben. Ben, how dare you be five, six, sir? How dare you? There's, there's got to be all these guys running silent, running deep. Like, there's there's these girls. I guarantee you, girls are sitting next to some guy right now, whether it's in class or whether it's at a bar or it's at work. And these girls have no idea. This guy's, like, got a quarter million in cash. He's got his house paid off. He's on his way on the up and up. And then, like, no one can predict the future. But 40, not even 40, 20 years from now, he's going to be a multimillionaire. These girls don't know that. But then some douche wearing sunglasses indoors walks in, which is the number one sign that he ain't got no money. Ooh. 
Ralph Raphael, two bucks. Could you do another collab with Terrence Pop? I'd love to, but we're we're busy. I texted him. I said, hey, Pop, I got new course opening up. He hasn't gotten back to me. Pop does pop. You know Pop. He does his thing. I would love it. I would love to take Pop to the Sturgis rally. I would love to see Pop at Sturgis. That'd be great. That'd be great. Mexi man and cheese, five bucks. Husband gets up to work out at 5 a.m. Wife, men lose weight so easily. Turns over and goes back to sleep. You got it. You got it. I won't say with who, but someone asked me, why are you working out all the time? And this person was mm, 250 pounds and not tall. And just and, and, and you just... Hey, you know, just to get my heart rate down, I guess. Like, you just know they're not going to listen. You just know. And say, so just, ah, well, you know, I like it, which I don't. I don't like lifting weights. I love hiking, but I don't like lifting weights. <clears throat> just pat them on the head. Sam Whiskey. Oops. Sam Whiskey, the most American name in America. Ten bucks. The men have landed on the deserted island, and they have burned the boats. Uh... Well, yeah, they 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 are not coming back. I don't think we could build boats if we wanted to. We're men. It, dude, they always. Oh my God, the marriage rate's dropping. The birth rate is dropping. You think it was dropping before? You just wait for the next five to ten years. The rate at which it is dropping is going to increase. It's it's just going to plummet. This is like, oh my God, it's dropping. Kabam! It is going to happen. Wisco Nomad, two bucks. My abortion rights. Yep. Yep. Never mind the nuanced and very important argument about the issue of state rights over in, uh, abortion rights and how you could just drive across the state and they, that's the great American experiment. And you can go over to the other state where you're more, more likely aligned with the people in the politics there. Nope. Uh, Levi Shredpick. Two dollars. Thank you, Levi. I kind of coming down. I thought this would be quick. Uh, Levi Strepic again. Two bucks. Trade school, high schools. Ninety thousand at twenty four years. Oh, Levi, Levi, a tradesman. A trade. How dare you, sir? What are you like the five foot six marine with his house paid off? What ninety? Th that's it. Ninety thousand. We need six figures minimum, Levi. And you better. Get a master's degree and something sexy. <laughs> Actually, it's good you're in the man. Twenty four. Think about that. Twenty four years old, ninety k a year. I bet you you could build and fix up your own house or like you know uh, barter it out. You're you're in great shape, man. That's so cool. That is so cool. Wisco Nomad, two bucks. Some girls don't want you to self improve at the gym. Well, who are those girls? I know when I go to the gym, my girlfriend likes it a lot. Like, I come back, she's like, oh, hi. I'm like, hey, how you doing? Which goes back to the previous previous video or two ago where people, oh, my God, you still hold hands? And again, I ask, what do you guys do? You don't hold hands? God, oh, my. Do you remember that back in the 50s? We weren't around in the 50s, but you see the pictures in the movies. Uh, you know, Cary Grant would always give his arm or the elbow, and they'd escort the ladies down. Girls would have a nice dress. You girls remember where you wore dresses? Ah, and most of you are too too young to remember. Girls in my day, back when they were young, <clears throat> would wear dresses and wear skirts sometimes. It's true. It happened. At one point in American history, in the world history, actually, women didn't dress like dudes. It's amazing. I'm right. I'm 100% right. Like, there's no, this, this is wrong. Like, society is, the individual is right. The society is wrong. You girls are all wrong. You're all wrong. But I can't convince you of that. I got to kind of point out things to maybe get you to start thinking about things a little bit differently. Like, oh, wait, yeah, maybe this isn't in my best interest. Maybe we are wrong. But just, just so you know, guys, let me, let me give you a gift, a gift from Cappy. We're the ones that are sane. All right. We're the ones that are sane. Everybody else is effed up. I, I, you know, girls can wear pants, of course, you know, and yeah, go ahead. You're working or running or working out, but yeah, wear a dress. Oh, ah, no, 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 no. That's normal. All right. That's expected. 
That's that's healthy. You can wear a dress. Well, I know. Okay, have fun with that philosophy. You only get one life. I'm glad you're already a third dead. And you only got two thirds left to go. One third left before no one really gives a damn about you because you're no longer pretty or young. Sorry, ladies. That's the truth. Oh, all these truth bombs today. I don't care. I'm just... Oh, no kidding. They burned another city down. Oh. No kidding. The fat activist died of unknown causes at 32. I wonder what it was. <clears throat> Gahigby. Gahigby. 20 generous dollars. Thank you very much, Gahigby. Hey, a-hole. Congrats on 100,000 subscribers. Thank you. I owe it all to you guys. I, uh, I, As you see, I spent all my money on fancy clothes. Actually, this is uh, Vince over at Masculine Geek gave me this. I so rarely buy my own clothes. I always get hand-me-downs. Almost 50 years old, I'm still getting hand-me-downs, which is great. I don't know why people, well, where are you going to, now look, I got very nice suits over there. Like if I need to go out to a nice place, yeah, I can I can dress up. Vegas, I got some more uh, fashionable non-suit attire. Um, <clears throat> but for your rank, just everyday grubs, you, just goodwill, man. Professor Spud, five bucks. Rush in the 70s and 80s was more feminist than America at the time. Then came the hard times in the 90s. Looks like we're 30 years behind them. Yeah, we're going to go through a cycle. Uh, the people who have themselves master's degree in the liberal arts know better. This time they'll get communism right. Women say, oh, what? Free stuff? And you'll fight the patriarchy? Okay. And then there won't be any food. And it'll take about 70 years. And they're like, hey, did you know communism didn't work again? Um, I won't be around for that though. Wisco Nomad, two bucks again. Going to the gym causes your girl hamster wheel to spin. Uh, maybe. <clears throat> I will admit though, in South Dakota, there's like no competition. It's not like <laughs> my girlfriend's one of the hottest ones in South Dakota, which actually is not saying much. It's not like, oh, is she that hot? No, it's just <laughs> they're not that good looking here in this state. It's she's pretty, don't get me wrong, but. <laughs> She must be a real babe. No, the South Dakota women are just just hideous. They're just hideous. So she is not worried about me running off with uh, Bertha to her cattle ranch. Ray John, hey, our Canadian agent in the field for five fifty Canadian. Cappy, you said you don't apply to make. You said don't apply to major metro police departments. That's absurd. Metro departments are better than rural. Well, I don't know. Maybe in Canada they are, uh, but in the United States, the the city the city people, the city folk. Uh, they hate cops. They hate law and order. And pretty much your city folks are criminals. You're one of two things if you're in a major metropolitan area. You're either a criminal, philosophically speaking, I mean, or you're uh, like a, <clears throat> a good, obedient Democrat who forgives criminals. You're one of the two. But in either case, no one likes the cops. So I am absolutely... And here's the thing. The point of a cop is to protect and serve the population. I do not want to protect and serve places like San Francisco, Chicago, Minneapolis. Their citizens are assholes. Their citizens are parasites. They're stupid and they're hypocrites. I don't want to protect or serve a citizenry that hates me. Gosh, what? I mean, because I'm, I'm white. I got a, a penis. I uh, work hard. I vote Republican. I want my taxes. No, no, no. No, those people, if, if, no one on my team here, okay? None of you listening to me, should, I know a lot of boys, you oh, maybe I should become a cop. Become a cop for a medium or small town. Do not, because you will not, you, they're, they're, they're not going to like, they're going to, no, no. That's another one, ladies, you, cops, good men, cops. Oh, but uh, I cab, all cops are bastards. A cab, but I hate the po po. All right, fine. I don't know. Find yourself a a poet. I don't know. Sam whiskey, five bucks. A girl at the bar told me she has ADHD. No, she no. Okay, I told her I have HDTV. The joke went over her head. <laughs> Another little bit of information for the one girl still listening. Don't be a moron. Uh, if you girls want to get the guys, like, have a job. Don't have any student loan debt. Be clever. Have a personality. 
Don't simply exist. Don't simply be, become something. Oh, we could, no, AJ, five bucks. After yesterday's lecture in Chicago, I'm on Dark Heart Island. Still here physically, but mentally I've checked out. Let it all go down. Look, look, until you and Chad Elkins and all my buddies in Chicago move out, I don't care about you. You could have, what, what, having Golem as the mayor before? That wasn't bad enough for you? What, do you think Chicago was going to get some conservative libertarian Republican title? Oh, we're going to balance the budget. We're going to get this. We're going to send cops and pull troll. Why are you there? Look, the, the next mayor after this new one is going to be another socialist douche. And the one after that one's going to be a socialist douche. The third one will be a socialist douche. And the fourth one will be a socialist douche. And then you, Chad, and all my show, you'll be 80 years old. I got a loan. I got a socialist. I don't know. Maybe two buildings will be left up standing. Levi, stress pick again for five bucks. I'm actually a Marine. Got a hot girlfriend too, but finding her was a nightmare. A lot of bipolar chicks. Yeah, the real and the fake ones. Well, good for you, Levi. I'm glad to hear that. Wisco Nomad, two bucks. Ugly and nice and women are directly correlated. Ugly and nice. No, not anymore. How old are you, Wisco? In the day, yeah. Now, I would say the ugly girls are even meaner. Because uh, they're going to they're gonna retroact or re preemptively strike at you for rejecting them. Hey, Ron Suarez, our other Latino agent in the field. Two bucks. Cappy Shelby, Mustang, old school or new? Uh, either. If you gave me like the old 60s one, yeah, obviously. Um, but I would take a modern day Shelby. And by modern day, I'd say 2012 and later. Um, the the newest incarnation of the Mustang, yeah, where it's got more of that hexagonal cuts to it. It's all right, but I'm looking 2012 to 2016 would kind of be my, I like the circular lights. <clears throat> Wisco Nomad, two bucks. Wisconsin screwed up after Supreme Court election yesterday. What I don't what do they do now? Wait, the Supreme Court election? Do they elect the judges at the Supreme Court? I don't know. I'm never going back to Wisconsin. Wisconsin can eat a bag of dicks. Captain Jack, two bucks. Congrats on the hundred thousand Cappy Thicks for everything. No problem. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Except for this guy. This guy here. If he could go away. Non-stop Dre for two bucks. Congrats on your engagement to the, the GF hashtag man up. No, there will be no engagement. There will be no marriage. None. There will be volunteerism. There will be choice. There will be a, uh, an agreement upon both of us to hang out and commit to one another. And there will be no need for a government to crystallize that. Uh, Dominique. Five euros. Hi, greetings from Deutschland. Been consuming red pill content for a while, but reading the book of numbers really, really opened my eyes. Good. Well, I'm glad you liked it. Um, I don't know what it's like in Germany. I imagine it's the same. <clears throat> um, it, it I, the numbers kind of parlay over Europe and the Anglosphere. Any first world nation is doing it because it's largely economic growth that's causing this. Uh Second and third world, maybe not so much third world. Second world, though, they're they're having it hit them too. For all of our Latino and uh, Asian brothers out there, uh, you guys are you guys are aware of this as well. Ray John, speaking of third world countries, <laughs> just kidding, Canada. <laughs> uh, soon though, soon. Uh, major cop departments have more promotions, more special units, more busy. Oh, good, go work for them. Look, I've never been to these towns. But I'm never protecting the citizens of Toronto. I'm never protecting the citizens of Quebec. I'm never protecting the citizens of, we're running out. What's left? Montreal. F those people. I'm not protecting New York. I'm not protecting Chicago. I'm not protecting uh, <clears throat> St. Louis. I'm not protecting, I'm not protect. no. I'm not protecting people that hate me. Oh, darn, you got shot by the people you voted to give more government money. Ooh, there was a stabbing in San Francisco. Uh, too bad. Because if I would have tried to stop them, oh, why are you arresting them? Why are you trying to keep us down? All right. Is that it? That's it. Boom. <clears throat> all right. Well, thank you very much for all the kind donations. Ladies, good luck.
I'm, I'll, I won't lie. It, it'll be my parting shot. I did not shot, but my. I know how this is going to end up. And I have accepted this reality. There will not be a reconciliation. There will not be an epiphany. This We are going to go until there's not enough men incentivized to keep society going anymore. That's how this ends. And I already have my biggest, most flavored bucket of popcorn I'm going to enjoy eating because that's what's going to happen. And I'm going to love being right. For some of you gals out there, you might be able to snatch yourself a good guy and have a different life and a different fate than all your other pissed off, jealous, miserable spinster sisters. But that's going to be such a small percentage. I, and I recommend all of you get your bucket of popcorn and enjoy. All right, link below. The dad you never had. That's for you boys too. If you, I don't, I even have a section about like, hey, setting it up so you don't need infrastructure. Like, I don't know. Do you want to live off grid a little bit? Everything your dad did it there. Take it too. You guys might enjoy it. Um, and that's about it. Nonstop trade, two bucks. But Cappy, a real man. You're right. A real man does do all those things. That's right. And I'm not one. I'm just going to go shovel my driveway. All right. We'll see you guys later. Toodles.